The breath is like medicine for the body and the mind. It's for bringing things into balance. In traditional medicine, they attribute diseases to an imbalance in the elements. And the same principle applies to the mind. Sometimes the mind is too lazy, sometimes it's too hyperactive. Sometimes it's worried too much, sometimes it's too confident, too heedless. So you have to find some way to bring the mind into balance. When the Buddha talks about the factors for awakening, there's one set that's for when the mind is too sluggish, and another set for when it's too active. When it's too sluggish, you try to analyze things, put it forth an effort to change what's unskillful. To the point where there's a sense of well, intense sense of well-being, rapture. If the mind is too active, you don't want to be engaged in those activities. Then you try to calm things down. There's calm, there's concentration, equanimity. So each time you sit down to meditate, ask yourself, where is the mind right now? Where is the body? Sometimes they're going to reflect each other. When the mind is hyperactive, the body feels tense wired up. When the mind is sluggish, the body feels like it could just drop down on the ground. So you've got to figure out which direction it's going, and then try to compensate for it. Bring everything back into balance. The problem is, all too often, the director of your meditation, i.e., the person inside who's talking about what you're doing, the voice inside, is leaning in the wrong direction, too. So you have to be able to step back from the state of the body and the state of the mind, and learn to be a little bit more objective about it. This is why the Buddha said that mindfulness is always skillful in every situation. Because mindfulness reminds you of teachings like this, that when things seem to be leaning off to the left, maybe you're leaning too far to the right. We've got to bring things back into balance. And you remember the skills you've picked up from your meditation before, and you can bring them to bear. And then you're alert to make sure that things are coming into, into harmony, into balance. And when they're there, then try to keep them there. So have a balanced approach to things. And you'll notice when someone is walking on a tight wire, they maintain their balance. But sometimes they lean to the left, lean to the right to compensate for part of the body that's leaning in the other direction. So notice there are times when you have to lean as well to compensate. You can't just sit there and watch, 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 watch all the time. There are some defilements that go away when you look at them squarely. Others hide behind your eyes so you can't see them. You have to learn how to look around. And oftentimes, the defilements are not even hiding at all. They're just brazen. They don't care whether you're looking at them or not. They're going to do their thing. So that's when you have to struggle with them. Even though the goal of our practice is to get to a place where there is no struggle, you have to struggle to get there. It's like going to a safe, safe place but going through the jungle. You can't just say, well, in the safe place I get to lie down and relax, and then you lie down and relax in the jungle. That doesn't work. You've got to work. Knowing that the work is good, and that the goal it's taking to is good as well.